When Mike Colaleo found out he won the Medal of Honor, he thought he was in trouble. He was on the front lines fighting Germans in April 1945 when two military policemen showed up. And they pulled me back to the rear where my uh, captain was. I said, what the heck are you guys doing taking me? You know, I thought I did something wrong. And they said, no, Mike, you're going back to the, the company. I said, what the heck for? I figured, you know, I'm always in trouble anyway. <laughs> and no, they got back to it and the captain says, Mike, you're going back for the Medal of Honor. I said, what the heck's the Medal of Honor? We don't know what that, that stuff, you know, at that time. And he said, yeah, well, what you did on the tank and everything like that. I said, oh, so they took me and brought me back to headquarters. That was about 10 miles behind the lines. And that's where I stood until I went back home. Kalaleo landed in France in 1944 and fought his way across the Rhine into Germany. It was hard and dangerous. He remembers his first combat just a week after landing. Twelve men were killed from his unit. So getting a medal for doing his job was puzzling to him. After I got done, I suppose I was scared as hell. And but the time when you see your uh, friends like you, or what you were with me, or you, you know, getting killed alongside of you, then you start thinking a little bit more. Hey, my friends are getting killed. They're going to get killed, or me going to get killed, or they're going to get killed, one or the other. And you got to fight to do. To, uh, if you understand what I'm talking about, anyway. They were talking about April 7, 1945, when Mike Colaleo and his unit were pinned down on a hill by several Nazi machine guns. Unless the German nests were stopped, several Americans would continue to face this deadly fire. A tank support was called in but couldn't flush out the Germans, so Colaleo ran out in the open, in the line of enemy fire, climbed on top of the Allied tank, and started firing the machine gun mounted there. Got shot at there, pretty much shelled and shot, and we were all laying down on the ground there, and, and our tanks came up, little light tanks came up, and then I got up and I hollered to them and told them, let's go. And we started going, all of us, and and that's when the gun, they shot the gun off my hand. That's when I got on the tank, and the tank, and I started, they told me in a tank where the tank where the machine guns were. Understand what I'm talking about? Uh -oh. Like a machine gun nest over there, way over there in the far. And they told me where to, where they were from the guy in the tank, and that's where I got these people. Until they ran, my gun jammed anyway on a tank, the machine gun, and I got off in there and gave me the Thompson. And I got off, and then my friend of mine, the sergeant, was uh, wounded. Yeah, him and a couple other guys, but I took him back to the lines. Kalaleo was still a teenager at the time, just 19 years old, and was exposed to enemy fire the whole time. More than 50 years later, he remembers it vividly. It's still not easy to talk about. He could only motion when asked how he could have survived this ordeal. Kalaleo finds solace in the company of other combat vets. He makes many of his group's reunions. He says, memories of battle were sometimes too real. Especially when I got home the first time, the first couple of years. I used to get up in the night and dream, you know, and wake up. Then it started getting better and better and better, you know. But if there's a big bang or something still now, I'll, I'll back up in what I'm talking about. Car backs up or somebody backs up. Or, boy, I'm jumping like <laughs> Mike Colaleo was awarded the Medal of Honor by President Harry Truman. He's met every president since, from Eisenhower to Clinton. As special as that has been to him, he doesn't think he did anything any of his fellow comrades in arms wouldn't have done. And he says it's important not to glamorize war. He says it's no good. But sometimes we have to protect our country. Until I get somebody firing at me. And I realized that uh, it wasn't, uh, it was real. You have to fight for your country. Who started the war? You know, the Germans started the war. Then the Japs started the war on us. So we have to protect our country. And I don't think, I think a lot of young people don't realize that, that we're free. We're a country that's free.